Hey, this is Stu, and I want to tell you all about the brand new Magic Bullet Colorista 5. So I'm here in Premiere, and there's a lot of ways to work with Colorista. It's an effect you can apply to footage, but the way I like to do it is to go to Window, under Extensions, and open the Panel. Colorista has this beautiful panel that works inside of Premiere and After Effects, and it's resizable and has this beautiful layout that adapts to whatever size and shape you put it on your screen. This is a really nice way to work with Colorista. In fact, when you're working with the panel, you don't even have to apply the effect. As soon as you touch any of these controls, a Colorista effect is automatically applied to your footage and you're just working with color. And as you can see, I've jumped right in here to the heart of Colorista, which is this beautiful three-way color corrector. You have the option to display these numeric controls here or hide them for a cleaner look. And you can adjust your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights. You'll notice that we don't label these with for instance, like Gamma and Gain. Colorista is very compatible with all of your ideas about how to work with a three-way color corrector, but we do a little bit more than a typical simple Gamma adjustment, for example. We're really working hard to make these controls intuitive and graceful, even when you want to push them into extreme cases. So I can adjust the brightness of the midtones here, or the brightness of the highlights. And of course, I'm watching my results on the scope over here while I'm working. I can reset just this section if I want. Now we've made some subtle adjustments to how the three-way color corrector works in Colorista 5. But unlike with previous versions of Colorista, we're maintaining backwards compatibility with Colorista 4. In fact, Colorista 5 installs right over Colorista 4, and your old projects will continue to work. Now, we've improved a lot of things in Colorista 5, and that means it renders slightly different. But if the compatibility is important to you, we've included this render version control. So you can always go back to the Colorista 4 render style, and you can just see like a subtle change in how the highlights are rendered here. A lot of times you're not gonna notice the difference between Colorista 5 and Colorista 4 rendering, but if you do and you need to go back, you've got that option. Most of the subtle changes that we've made are all about HDR. HDR is increasingly important because we're able to master for HDR and display it on wonderful HDR displays. But it's important to remember that Colorista and all of Magic Bullet has always been HDR compatible. There's a lot of different ways to do HDR. Different NLEs do it different ways. But because Colorista is a 32-bit floating point effect, it works with overbrights and always has, so it's compatible with every single HDR workflow out there. But because HDR is increasingly important, we've added a few controls specifically for it. So we have, for example, this highlight boost control. Let's switch our scope to HDR mode, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about here. This is a piece of standard dynamic range footage, and the sky is essentially flat and even kind of blown out. If I start working with color, you can immediately see that even the simplest adjustment really just kind of turns that sky into just this field of ugly yellow. And of course, you can see exactly why that is on the scope. The sky is just perfectly flattened, pressed up against 100. Well, Highlight Boost is an awesome control for just pushing your highlights up into HDR. And this is an amazing thing to see on an HDR display because you can actually see the highlights get brighter than everything else around them. But it even helps you with standard dynamic range color correction. Let's turn it back down and do that same sort of sunset warming adjustment to this shot. And now let's turn up Highlight Boost. And you can see it just pushes the highlights right through that color correction. They're still golden warm, as you can see on the scope, but now they're bright golden warm. It makes it look so much more realistic. The same is true if we push the color really far in the opposite direction. Double click on Highlight Boost to reset it. And let's push this image really far into blue. Maybe darken it down a little bit, and we'll even reduce the saturation. I'm going for sort of a day for night look here, but I'm really not happy with how it's looking because the footage was already kind of blown out in the highlights and they just don't look realistic. But if I just crank up highlight boost a little bit, I can achieve the exact look I'm going for. This looks great on the birds shot as well here. Same thing here, let's push it into a crazy sunset zone and I'm gonna turn up Highlight Boost and what you'll see is it just makes all of the highlights on the birds just kind of pop through the adjustment and the clouds too, looks so cool. So again, let's see it without Highlight Boost and with. And for HDR output, this might be perfect, but of course we've also got this beautiful Highlight Roll-Off control. This has always been there, we used to call it Highlight Recovery. And again, now we can just round those highlights off. So we boosted them up, then we did our color correction and now we're rolling them off. But you can see it's still an HDR friendly look. 
you can see that we haven't fully capped off all of the overbrights. So now we've transformed this footage from standard dynamic range footage that was shot on an iPhone, believe it or not, and turned it into something really special. Let's go back to this shot, reset Colorista, and let's just play with the three-way and kind of give this shot an overall kind of warm and cool look. We'll warm up the highlights and cool off the shadows, try to make the truck look really cool. I'm liking some of the colors I'm getting there, but I'm having a typical problem that happens when you adjust the shadows of the image, which is that you kind of have to choose between either flashing them up to a milked out version of the color or crushing them down and losing detail and winding up with this kind of artificial oversaturated shadow zone. In a lot of color correctors, the solution to that is to go into curves and work with the saturation across the range of luminance. Curves can be great and powerful and Colorista has wonderful curves for adjusting contrast and midtones and shadows and highlights. But when it came time to figure out how to adjust individual colors, we decided not to go with curves, but instead to go with this beautiful HSL control. This is basically allowing you to adjust hue and saturation across a range of hues. It's doing the same job that a lot of color controls do with curves, but it's doing it so much faster and easier with just a single click. You drag the control toward the color you want to move to. And it's super easy and wonderful. And we tried to figure out how could we bring that same control for saturation. And what we came up with is the saturation EQ. So we have saturation by luminance and saturation by saturation. So let's reset this stuff here. So as soon as I start dropping down this one here, you'll just see that I am reducing the saturation of only the shadows. And it's so easy, it's just a couple of clicks. You don't have to fuss with a detailed little curve. Let's reset it and remind ourselves about that chunked up look here, and then we'll just dial it back down. And we can do the same for the highlights. So if the highlights are getting a little too saturated for us, we can just bring them down and create this beautiful little EQ curve so that's saturation over luminance, but we also have saturation over saturation. So we can adjust the saturation of the low saturation colors as well as the high saturation colors, which means we have a ton of really simple and powerful control over all of the ranges of colors in our image. I'm really happy with this saturation EQ control. I think it gives you all the control of curves, but with far fewer clicks. Of course we have our temperature and tint controls up here, as well as exposure. And we have a new one up here. It seems so simple, but we didn't have it before. We've got a contrast slider. It's really beautiful. It does a lovely contrast adjustment to the image. Of course, Colorista works just as well with log footage. Here's a shot from a Sony a7S II. And to jump in to start correcting this shot, I'm actually gonna use our wonderful guided color correction tool. This is a great way to start with any shot, but especially log footage. It asks you what kind of footage yours is, and it shows you here. You can easily see that this one looks best with the log lookup, so we'll just use that. And Guided Color Correction walks you through setting the black point, and it removes the color to make this part easier, the white point. Now you can see where I'm clipping a little bit, but that's okay because I know how to work with that later. Dialing in the midtones. And again, I'm not doing exactly what the recommendation is here because I'm using my eye and looking at this black and white image. I'm just thinking about the tonal range right now. Contrast looks pretty good to me. And then saturation. By manually bringing up the saturation, I'm in control of how colorful the image is and I just stop it when it feels right to me. And then this is the most powerful part. I can adjust temperature and tint and I've got a scope here to help me dial things in. I can even choose a neutral gray color or even eye drop a skin tone. And as I look at my colors adjusting on the scope here, I can actually grab the scope and move it around and see the effect on the image as well as on the memory color scope. And when I'm done, all of those settings are in these sliders here. All of those adjustments are now mine to tweak and adjust further. Let's copy this adjustment and put it on another shot. You can see that it almost worked here. We'll bring down the highlights a little bit. But we know that before we applied Colorista to this shot, we had all this detail in the sky here. I wanna to talk to you about some really powerful controls that we have for adjusting highlight and shadow regions. Again, we had these sliders in Colorista 4, but we've improved them greatly, so much so that we wanted to give them a new name. So down here under Structure and Lighting, we have Highlight Regions, Shadow Regions, and Clarity. And these tools work together to allow you to adjust the lighting values of your image in a localized way based on highlights and shadows. It's a lot different than just adjusting a highlight, as you'll see. Watch as I bring down highlight regions of this shot. What's happening here is that the sky 
is perfectly and cleanly isolated and we can bring it down exactly to taste. We can also do the same with the shadows. We can lift them up a little bit. And this works just as well on video footage as log. It works with HDR. It works with all of the different kinds of footage you could have. And it plays back in real time. Now, I love all of the detail in the bear and in the forest floor here. And I kind of want to bring it out a little bit more. And that's what the clarity control is for. Watch as I bring it up. What you can see is that there's this beautiful sense of bringing out all of the wonderful detail of the image. And of course, I can push it too far, but I'm going to just back it off and be artistic about it. And of course, we've got negative clarity too, which can bring a dreamy quality to a shot or can just back off on distracting detail. Watch what clarity does to this shot of the truck. I bring up the clarity and it seems to make the truck appear more shiny and more detailed. It's such a cool effect, but I don't really love what it's doing to the overall image, so I'm just gonna mask it off using Premiere's built-in masking tools. And that's, of course, the beautifully powerful thing about working with Colorista is that it just integrates so perfectly with all of the tools that you already know how to use in your NLE. So now I'm just bringing this extra bit of clarity into this side of the truck, and you can just see here as I toggle it on and off, there it is without, there it is with. It's just a beautiful way of just adding a little more detail and drawing my attention to the shiny side of the truck. Super cool, very powerful effect that I think you're gonna really like using. This footage is from a short film that I shot recently. So let's take this shot here and just use it as an example of how all these tools work together. I'm gonna to start by choosing a LUT for this shot. And right away you can see something amazing here. We have this beautiful LUT browser and it shows a visual preview of the LUTs that you're gonna apply. This is awesome. And it works with the built-in LUTs as well as your own LUT collection. So in this case, I'm gonna use Universal Log 5. This is the new version of the Colorista Universal Log LUT. And because I'm using a Log LUT, I'm gonna switch the control response to Log. You may remember this from Colorista 4. It just makes the controls work a little nicer with Log. And you can see now the color temperature and tint are gonna look really beautiful and organic on this Log footage. Here's the tint. And same thing with exposure. And as I go through the exposure, you can really see what the challenging lighting conditions were of the shot here. I've got some pretty blown out highlights and a lot of detail that might be nice to see in these shadows. I could try to play with contrast or with the three-way color corrector on this shot, but really I know that the best way to deal with it is going to be using the highlight and shadow regions. So watch as I just bring down the highlight regions. You can see I can just tame that overexposed area without affecting the contrast of the rest of the shot. Same with shadows. I can just bring them up a little bit. Now I want to be careful with this. I don't want to go too far. And I can also work with highlight roll off in this case. Highlight roll off will also tame those highlights. And then maybe once I've done that, I could just bring back a tiny bit of contrast and I can have a much more sort of organic presentation of what is really a, a crazy amount of dynamic range. So there was the log version and here's the color correction. And I'll just bring the shadows into a little cool zone because we're supposed to be going into a spooky, cool forest here. Maybe I'll do a little bit of that with temperature as well. And this is a perfect case to just bring down the saturation in the shadows a little bit. And one thing I found that was really helpful was to take the kind of bright, sunny, characteristic out of these type of shots was to take the green and just push them a little lower saturation and a little bit towards blue. Just made the forest seem a lot more foreboding and scary if there weren't poppy beautiful green leaves in every single shot. Let's jump back up to that LUT browser. I want to show you one more thing. And that's this import button here. So I've got these beautiful LUTs that Colorista comes with. But then I've got this import button. And on my desktop, I've got some LUTs from our friends over at Triune. And I'm just going to grab the cube versions here. And I'm just going to grab the log ones. And if I select that whole folder, I can open and scroll down and see that I have brought in every single one of those LUTs. And I can visually preview them. And all of these LUTs are just files on your hard drive. They're stored in your documents folder and you can rename these folders, do whatever you want, keep them organized. But this is such a powerful way to visually browse your LUTs. I can immediately see which ones of these might work for this shot. Like this one looks pretty cool. Let's give it a try. And then you know what I could do? Okay, so that's pretty good for this shot, but maybe what I would want to do is just lift up the highlights a little bit, add a little more contrast into the shadows, maybe open up the mids just a tiny bit. And then I'll adjust the contrast slider. So now I've done my tweak on that LUT. And guess what I can do? Right here next to this choose a LUT button, well, there's also a save button. That's right, I can save my own LUT. So now I can generate LUTs with Colorista. This is a huge new feature that I think is gonna be really powerful. So I'm gonna give this my 
name. It's going to go in the custom folder, but I can also rename that. So actually, let's name this for the project. We'll call it COS for Circle of Stone. And there's a little warning down here. Saved LUTs cannot include vignette, highlight regions, shadow regions, or clarity settings. And of course, the reason for that is all of those are more than just color correction. They actually are spatial adjustments that work across different regions of your image. So this preview shows you exactly what your LUT is going to be able to contain of the color correction that you've done. And in this case, I didn't adjust any of those settings. So it looks exactly the way I expect it to. And I'm going to hit generate. So now I'll reset this version of Colorista here. I'll go back to choose a LUT. The same beautiful LUT browser comes up. All these wonderful thumbnails populate. I'll go down to custom and there's this COS folder and here's my COS forest LUT. So I'll apply it and now that's my starting correction for this shot. And by the way, Magic Bullet Looks version 5 also shares this same LUT folder. So any LUT that you create with Colorista you can use inside of Magic Bullet Looks. But hey, you know, we were kind of falling in love with these highlight regions regions, shadow regions, controls, clarity, and of course, who doesn't love a nice vignette? I want to be able to use all of these controls in some kind of format that I can share with other people. Well, we have that as well. Because a LUT can't do everything, we also now have presets for Colorista. And I can save a preset that adjusts these settings here, or I can choose a preset. The preset browser looks a lot like the LUT browser, and you've got all these things to choose from, and again, you see the live preview here. So let's go back to our bird shot, for example. I'm gonna choose a preset, and there's a super cool preset called HDRify. Let's apply it, and it does exactly what it says in the tin. It uses highlight boost and highlight roll off together to add a little extra boost to your highlights. So here it is before, here it is after, it's adding a little contrast and a little highlight boost. And now if we do that same correction we were doing before, it's working through this highlight boost and highlight roll off to give you that really natural look to your overexposed highlights. So that's Magic Bullet Colorista 5. It's your do everything, take everywhere, Swiss Army knife of color. A powerful three-way color corrector that works the way your eyes expect. Easy controls for temperature tint exposure, contrast, new highlight boost and highlight roll off controls for beautifully working with HDR footage, highlight regions and shadow regions and clarity for adjusting the contrast and texture of your image, saturation EQ to give you all the control of curves with just a few clicks, We've still got all these wonderful controls like we always had, like the ability to draw skin overlay over the image to show you where your skin tones are lining up, powerful keyer, and now a beautiful visual LUT browser as well as a preset browser. And the ability to generate LUTs that you can use anywhere in your workflow, whether it's in Colorista, Magic Bullet Looks, or anywhere else. Magic Bullet Colorista is the easiest to use, most powerful color corrector out there. And you can use it in Premiere, After Effects, Final Cut Pro, anywhere you like.